Hi, it's Willow here from Willow's Web Astrology, and I'm here today to do a little video on the development of ethics for astrologers. Uh, and this can be the development of a set of professional guidelines, professional ethical guidelines that you would use for a paid practice of astrology. Uh, and it's also related to, uh, but it's also related to uh, just the practice of astrology in general. So even if you're not practicing it professionally for money, so to speak, um, astrology, the practice of astrology requires uh, a certain, uh, a certain development of uh, ethical parameters, okay? And the, the primary reason is protective, okay? Protective both for you as an astrologer and for anyone who might be coming into contact with your practice of astrology. Um, astrology, as most astrologers will, uh, will, it, will let you know, is incredibly powerful very very powerful to the point that uh honestly when i started doing paid readings i was i was pretty well terrified <laughs> because i knew how incredibly powerful this tool was um that i was using and i knew that there was very little margin for error if any margin for error right uh so understanding the power and the potency of astrology, astrological interpretations, and just the magic and energy of astrology, right? Um, if you've been initiated into astrological work, um, you have uh, a weight of responsibility on your shoulders, right? You, you have uh, a responsibility uh, to practice astrology ethically, to practice astrology in a way that doesn't harm anyone and hopefully to practice astrology in a way that will help anyone who comes into contact with it. So because astrology is such, a, in, such an incredibly powerful tool, it can be used for both good and ill, okay? Uh, there are people out there who are using astrology uh, to help people, to heal people, to educate people, to support people, to validate people, to connect people to the magic of nature, the magic of uh, energetic reality on this planet. And then there are also people who are using astrology for less noble ends and people may use astrology uh, in these ways for power, to gain the upper hand, to literally harm other people, um, to attack other people. Uh, so basically when you take on an astrology practice, um, you're taking on the responsibility to shape your own practice, okay? So the development of your own personal set of ethics uh, happens as you unfold as an astrologer. Now, I will say that my perspective comes from being a self-taught intuitive astrologer. So the things that I'm saying in this, in this video could very well be uh, argued or they may, they may be considered contentious points for people who learned astrology uh, under a certain school of thought, under a certain more systematic way of learning astrology, okay? Now, there are uh, professional astrologers groups out there, and many of these groups have developed their own sort of codified set of professional ethics, okay? Now, I don't, uh, I don't follow that codified set of professional ethics, although it is, uh, it is uh, worthwhile, I think, to, to at least read it, go through it, and see where, you know, it provides sort of a foundation, right, for your prof professional ethics. But I'm a strong believer, again, of uh, building your own practice step by step, piece by piece, so that it fits you as an astrologer and so that it fits uh, your customers, your readership, your, you know, your, your audience, whoever is going to be coming into contact with your um, with your version of, uh, your, your interpretations, right? And your version of astrology. So those codified uh, sort of standardized sets of professional ethics 
again, can be really useful. But what I'm talking about in this video is more so um, the working process of creating those ethics, okay? So every astrologer really shapes uh, his or her own practice of astrology and uh, every astrologer out there really has uh, a, di a slightly different flavor of, of um, the astrology that they practice, right? And so because I tend more towards the art or the healing art side of astrology, um, as I say, I, I don't do things necessarily in more of a, in a systematic type of way necessarily. I apply things as they come up. And so basically, uh, just naturally uh, practicing as an astrologer, I've had areas where I have, I have learning lessons, okay? I have lessons to learn. Um, I have little things that have to be adjusted, little tune-ups. I have to make little rules, right, that I follow. Again, to protect me and to protect the person who's coming into contact with what I'm doing. Um, so one of the things that uh, has happened with, you know, the internet age is that astrology has become very, very accessible to any, you know, pretty much anyone who wants to delve into it. And this is a, a this is very different from how astrology has been historically, right? So historically, astrology has been more of an occult subject or a, a you know, secret knowledge or knowledge that only a, a few people held, right? Uh, now, the, the astrology is sort of being proliferated, right? And again, people can have access to it no matter, you know, whenever they want. Uh, so this is a this is a, both a good and a bad thing, right? Uh, because I think what happens sometimes with some of the pop astrology um, is that people don't fully respect or take responsibility for the potency of astrology, okay? So making kind of off-the-cuff outlandish statements using astrology, you know, clickbait type stuff, um, uh, you know, just sort of using astrology to gain attention for your, your practice yourself or what have you. There's, there, you know, there's some different uh, energies being applied to astrology these days. And mm, there is some caution, right? To not just sort of jumping in and going balls out with it immediately, right? But having some, uh, again, having some degree of uh, caution and patience, responsibility, and learning from each kind of interaction that you have um, as an astrologer. Okay, so yeah, so the idea uh, w with me, uh, what, with what I'm going to be talking about, is uh, different things that I've learned as far as how I should be using astrology or how I should not be using astrology. And now, this is a practice that this, these are ethical considerations that I've built myself. I'm not suggesting everyone else has to apply these ethical principles. I'm just using these as examples of some of the things that can come up when you are using astrology, again, either professionally or with your friends, even just with yourself, right? Um, there, there, this is sort of to keep your practice uh, um, on the right track and not kind of kicking up unpleasant uh, unpleasantness okay now the first thing that i will say is that there is no such thing as a universal astrologer so there's no such thing as one astrologer working for absolutely everyone in, out there okay now part of the problem with astrology these days i think is that it's quite competitive okay and there it's it, because it's difficult to make a living a full living doing astrology um there's a tendency, I think, to putting astrology into a monetized framework and then that monetary reward becomes the key element, not whether or not you should be doing this work, whether or not you should be doing this particular reading, okay? And so that that's difficult, right? That's something difficult to balance. Um, and so when I, like I said, when I started doing um, astrology readings, I started doing them uh, 14 years ago is when I started doing my earliest readings. I, I knew how powerful astrology was and I was, I was terrified as a new reader to, you know, to, re to really be, be doing it. 
And so what I set as a parameter right off the jump was that I only want to do the readings that I meant to do. I only want to do the readings that I, that I need to do and that I as a specific astrologer need to do for this person, right? So I want to do readings where, I only want to do readings where I have something uh, to communicate to this person that is needed, that's necessary, right? That this person needs to know or needs to hear at this point in their life. And so right off the jump, um, that sort of streamlined things, right? Just setting that intention and reinforcing that intention that it's only what's necessary, it's only what, what I, you know, and I have a Virgo North node, so, you know, that <laughs> you can hear that a little bit, right? Only what's necessary. But, but basically this, this is something that can apply to many different practices of astrology, right? Ultimately, you only want to be doing the readings or you only want to be doing the work that you're meant to be doing. Okay, you don't want to necessarily be branching out into doing any reading that comes your way, right? Anytime anyone comes for to you for reading, you just do it. Um, anytime any you know any flight of fancy idea comes up, you just throw it out there, right? Now that might work for some people. I'm not not saying uh, saying that. Uh, there are those sort of more universal people that can kind of you know that can kind of broaden things up a little bit. But for the most part, I would say you're creating you're creating a niche audience you're creating a niche for yourself in the world of astrology um with your particular flavor your particular interpretations of astrology uh you know you're creating your art form your either whether that's a healing art form or whatever art form you're you're creating that practice step by step like i say so the idea being that you want to do the readings that you're meant to do and you want to do the readings where your style of astrology is exactly what's needed, okay? Because what, what I find uh, is, and again, this is just my own, my own experience, um, is that if I have a little, bit of a, a little bit of a twinge about whether or not to do a reading, if I have a, a sense of like, mm, I don't know. If I try to go ahead and do that reading, uh, it just won't work. The magic, the magic just isn't there. Okay. So in order to do the most powerful and potent and beautiful and magical readings possible, right? Again, you're looking for um, that that readings that are your particular niche, right? Or again, just. Uh, Astro astrological work that is your work to do. Okay, so number one, uh, what I did was, again, I just set that parameter and that cleared a path to only doing the readings that are mine to do, only doing the readings where that person needs me as an astrologer to do this reading for them, okay? Okay, so secondarily, beyond that, there's also kind of more of an active day-to-day -day element where, uh, again, I'm filtering out any readings where I don't think I'm the right astrologer to do that reading, okay? Um, and that, that uh, at this point in my practice, that doesn't happen a lot, but it does sometimes happen. Uh, it happened a little bit more often, again, you know, 10, 12, 14 years ago when I was, when I was in the early years of doing readings. At this point, I've gotten to the point where I would say 99.5, 99, maybe even 99.8% of the time, it's, it's a reading I need to do. There's the odd reading that I have to uh, just sort of politely turn down because I'm just not the right astrologer uh, to do that reading. Okay, so as far as what readings I'm not the right astrologer to do, <laughs> that, that's kind of, that's kind of uh, uh, what, what, the jumping off point that I'll, I'll use. Um, uh, and some of these come from my own personal history of doing readings and some of them are just, you know, things that I've, I've, uh, come to realize on my own. Um, so number one, uh, one thing that I try to dissuade is obsession over relationships or obsession over other people using astrology. Okay. Um, I think that there is a little bit of an excessive focus on love relationships and using astrology to either get a love relationship, to 
get a lover back, to get a boyfriend back, boy, girlfriend, whatever, um, to manipulate someone into getting into a relationship. You know, there's all kinds of, you know, all kinds of semi-murky, <laughs> murky ways that people are using astrology to really, really obsess over relationships. And I'm not, a, uh, in, early on, I realized that in almost every case, as far as the people who were coming to me, when the person was asking for a relationship reading, almost always it was more beneficial for them to have a reading of their own chart. Okay, so it's not that relationship synastry isn't useful. It's not that there aren't times when relationship synastry is exactly the type of reading that's needed. Absolutely those exist. But what I'm saying is that there is a bit of a skewed sense, especially in the pop astrology uh, of the day, towards, again, obsessing over relationships. And so some of the ways that I think are a little underhanded on that front uh, and I, these are t types of readings that I will turn down, um, is number one, if there's any type of a manipulative element or a getting the upper hand element by learning about another person's astrology. And unfortunately, people do sometimes come in with that motivation uh, because they want to just learn more about this person because either they're an enemy or they're an ex, you know, ex-husband, ex-wife, ex-lover, whatever. Um, there's someone that bugs them, right? There, there's some, there, basically they want to use astrology to kind of dissect this person and to get the upper hand on them. And unfortunately that power related stuff is pretty common with astrology, but it's something that I will deflect and I, I will not take on a reading, um, for that reason. I won't take on a re reading to try to get someone to fall in love with someone else. Now, other astrologers will, other astrologers will do kind of love potion type readings and, and we'll do that. That's just my own personal ethics that uh, that's not, that's not the way that I use astrology. That's not the way that I feel that my practice of astrology should go. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so, uh, using astrology to manipulate or to control another person to get the upper hand, wanting me to trash another person that that's come that's come up a couple times too again where this person you know there's a battle going on or this person really sticks in this person's craw and they want me to basically astrologically trash this person that's an enemy of theirs okay no i'm not going to do that either I'm not going to do that either and uh that's something that i would also just sort of politely turn turn down okay um, yeah, so, you know, basically just anything where, um, the, the use of that reading might be, uh, something that I would not support. I, I just don't, I just don't do it. Okay. Another reason why I might refuse a reading would be a conflict of interest. Okay, so, um, and this has happened a few times as well, where the person, what the person does in the world or what the person believes or what the person's orientation is in the world somehow comes into direct conflict with uh, my own beliefs or my own ways in the world or what have you. And because of that, because of that conflict of interest, again, the magic just would not be flowing, right? If I tried to do the reading, it would be a, a struggle, an effort, and really it just probably wouldn't hit the marks, right? Because again, I'm just not that, I'm just not the astrologer for that person. It's not that that person is necessarily doing anything wrong. It's just that, again, it doesn't jive with my own take, with my own interpretations, with my own practice of astrology. So politely um, um, turning those down. Now, if you know of another astrologer that you think might be better, uh, you can definitely do a referral. That's always nice to say, you know, I don't think I'm the right astrologer for you, but here's someone who might be because they, they you know, they um, talk about those issues or they're more oriented towards that type of astrology. There might be situations, again, where someone is trying to access your astrological practice um, for purposes that you just don't agree with, 
okay? And it is well within your right, it is absolutely within your right to refuse any astrological work that you don't feel is right for you, right for your practice, um, or right for you ethically, okay? There can be a number of different uh, reasons why you may or may not, um, may or may not do that, okay? Uh, one big consideration with astrologers in general, uh, one big question is whether you will do a reading on someone's chart who isn't present and who isn't paying you for the reading, okay? So i.e. if someone comes to you for a reading and wants you to uh, read someone else's chart for them or do a synastry reading for them, uh, will you do it, okay? Will you do it? Uh, generally, my rule is that, well, what I like is to get permission from the person. If I get permission from that person to look at their chart, then that then that's fine. Um, uh, basically, you know, you can feel it out. You can feel it out. I've seen another astrologer, and I, I cannot recall her name at the moment, but she said that um, she will do those readings, uh, but she won't say anything that she wouldn't say to that person's face. And I think that's a really good way to keep things light and, and you know, above board, completely above board, is to, uh, you know, again, you're not using astrology to trash someone. You're not using astrology to... Um, pick out elements where they can be controlled or manipulated or their weak spots, right? Uh, again, if, if astrologers are using astrology for that purpose, you know, I, yeah, I wouldn't advise it. <laughs> I wouldn't advise that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise the sort of uh, karmic consequences of doing that. Um, but, you know, again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to judge, uh, I'm not going to judge how other people do their practice. I'm just going to maintain control of my own practice. And I think ultimately that's what, that's the, the point of it. So whether you're willing to do uh, those types of readings uh, and whether you, uh, you know, whether or not you're willing to, to do those types of readings, that'll be your own consideration. Um, and I, again, always come back to the intuitive faculty so in general, yes, I hone in on whether, again, a reading of that person, the customer's own chart would be a, a stronger reading to give. And often that's the case. But sometimes that synastry is exactly what the doctor ordered. It's exactly the type of reading that's needed. And in that case, you can either, again, get the person's permission or you can just hone in on your intuition. And if your intuition says green light or red light, green light, yellow light, or red light on doing that reading, right? And if it's a green light, then, then you can do that reading um, even without the person's permission. Because again, that's sort of a sanctioned reading, okay? That's a reading that needs to be done. And so you're there to do it. So anyway, that's just a qu little quick hit video, uh, just a few little tips on developing your own uh, ethical considerations. Now, this is this, again, this is just a few little examples. There are many, many examples that come up as far as um, how you practice your, how you practice astrology, how you don't practice astrology, the readings you do, the readings you do not want to do. Um, again, uh, I, I practice astrology as a spiritual art. So for me, uh, the, spiritual, the spiritual principles are always primary. Um, the money aspect of it has to be secondary to that. The business end of it has to be secondary to uh, following my spiritual principles and ethical considerations are part of those spiritual principles, right? Uh, so that's, again, one of the tricky things about doing astrology as a professional service that is a paid service. Um, it doesn't really fit into the standard like eight to five work world, the standard uh, way of running a business. There are, you know, there are, again, maybe more intense spiritual uh, or ethical or um, energetic considerations that you, that you might have to take, you know, take into, uh, take into your practice. Um, but yeah, basically the idea is that uh, if you're initiated into doing astrology, you know, and you just follow step by step, you don't jump ahead 
you, you follow step by step with what with what basically the universe is trying to teach you with with the work the universe is bringing to you if you follow through with that and apply the lessons and apply the parameters um you know this protects your practice of astrology uh it protects you as an astrologer and it also protects the people who are coming into contact with your astrology um, and i think these are all things that are uh, beneficial whether you're a practicing professional astrologer or whether you are doing astrology as more of a hobby or as more of a side gig um, just with friends and family whatever uh, everyone can I think benefit from uh, at least uh, considering these issues in their own practice